Hello everyone, this is Jean-Michel for OSIA. In this video, we are going to learn how we can embed MIDI content inside an OSIA score. So, how does that work? To get started, of course, we have to find some MIDI stuff to use. So here I will use some MIDI files, for instance, that I had on my hard drive. So, let's look at a simple case. I have a MIDI file with just one track. I can drag and drop it either from my file explorer or from the score library, for instance. And of course, if I, if I play it back, nothing happens. What we need to do here is to add a soft synth to which we can send our MIDI output, or of course, we can also add an external MIDI device. Um, so here I don't have hardware synthesizers, but if I had, I will do MIDI output, select my uh, sound cards MIDI out like this and drop like that. And my sound card is has its MIDI outlet, which is beeping. So I guess things are happening. But yeah, what we want here is to play with a soft synth like a free VSTi, something like that. So you can find your soft synth in um, the second tab, the processes. And I can search for, for instance, Dext, uh, which is available under many shapes. And OK, here, yeah, what happens is that I can connect um, the um, piano roll, which was created to my soft hint, start playing. And enjoy very nice classical sounds. All right, what happens if I want to do multi tracks? Um, so it's pretty much the same thing. Here I can just take a more complete MIDI file. And um, okay, here can go inside it. So if I have many tracks, I think it's uh, easier to go into nodal mode, this little toggle here, which allows to see things either as nodes in a graph or as a timeline and then go into timeline just for editing temporal content. So once I'm here, what can I do? I can just, okay, I'll just use text again for this. And uh, let's say um, that too. And I'll use Atlas for the drums. All right. This one is terrible. No. Okay. All right, so like this, I, I, I can have some MIDI content playing and well, do some basic uh, MIDI stuff. I can, of course, apply effects too. So what I can do, for instance, is um, say, okay, I'll apply some reverb. And if I want to apply reverb to everything here, my first option is to do that. So I just connect the output of all my synths to my reverb. Of course, if you have many tracks, that's not a good thing to do. So what can we do in that case? Um, so here the idea is to put this inside a scenario because a scenario acts as a group. So actually here we are already inside one big scenario. And what we can do is apply an effect to the output of this top level scenario. So that's our kind of master bus, for instance. How does that look? Well, here I'll simply switch back to nodal mode again. And as you can see, my scenario is here with my MIDI tracks. And here I can also add, let's say, um, this is going to be kinda ugly. So let's add some compression. And 
again some reverb. All right. <laughs> This way you can have the same feeling as being uh, behind the two doors uh, when going to a jig. So that's it for uh, using the piano roll. There is another MIDI generator process in OSIA, which is the um, pattern sequencer. So um, let's start new. And with this one, uh, instead of having MIDI notes, you have a MIDI pattern. So for instance, um, so let's say, so I have my pattern sequencer here and I can drop it and it will just play uh, these two things. So let's say, for instance, a very simple rhythm will be something like that. And I will send it to uh, my drum sequencer again. Okay. I have to choose. All right, so that's a very simple way to work. And a nice thing is that uh, with Core you have access to a large user library of things. So by default, the user library is not entirely downloaded because it will be too large, but you can go yourself, download some more things. So it's very easy. You have to go to the settings, packages, hit browse and refresh. And here it will uh, look for the available packages on the internet. So here, the one we want is drum patterns. It's a set of drum patterns taken from the internet. Uh, oh, I, I didn't press install, did I? Okay, okay, here you have to press install and it downloads and extracts it in your user library folder. So be careful because some of those are kind of large, like a few hundred megabytes. And yeah, and now once we are here, um, also it will reload them in the library upon the next restart, but what we can do is go here inside drum patterns. Um, thanks to Tidal for providing quite a lot of nice patterns and you can drag and drop them, those path files, dot pat, um, on uh, the patterns sequencer processor. So I don't know, um, yeah, good M and break, something like that. All right, so like that, you, you can use the pattern sequencer and um, you can also apply MIDI effects. And uh, so in the MIDI tab here, you have access to a whole lot of um, MIDI controls. So here, this VST has a lot. So um, for instance, uh, let's say that you want uh, to, to scale all the uh, MIDI inputs, increase them by some, let, let, let's say you, you want to increase all the MIDI, MIDI on, not on MIDI notes by five, uh, you can use, um, where is it? Uh, I, I don't remember which one it is actually. Uh, MIDI scale maybe? No. Arpeggiator, no. The, hmm. Has it disappeared? Could swear there was some kind of MIDI utility process. Okay, but I don't find it anymore. Weird. Uh, anyway, so here are the main ways to, to use MIDI in score. And uh, yeah, also you, you, can, you can extract the MIDI pitch with that. Uh, you can create a MIDI chord. RPG8, uh, MIDI scale. Oh, oh no, okay, okay, that's with MIDI scale, which allows to transpose. That was a, that's what I was looking for. And so, of course, that will give weird stuff. Uh, 
So yeah, so that's how you will use uh, MIDI processes in Ostia. Uh, we don't have recording of MIDI content yet, but that is coming uh, during the free Ostia score free version cycle. So yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, ping us on the forum or on the chat if you have any questions. Thanks, Social Michael.